Thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father Lord, for this beautiful evening, O Master. We thank you, Lord, for your words as where two or three are gathered in your name, Lord, that you are in their midst, O Father. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege that you have, Lord, given us, Lord, to come into your presence once again, O Lord, and to meditate on your word, O Father. Help us, O God, Lord, to understand every word, O God, the man of God brings, O Father, Lord, that we will understand the deep secrets, Lord, in your word, O Father, that, Lord, we, our eyes will be open and our ears attentive, O God, and our heart will be connected to you, Lord, this evening, O Father, Lord, surrender every family that has joined us, Lord, in prayer. Lord, I pray, O Father, God, that your presence will rest upon each one of them, O Lord. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart, O Lord, be a sweet-smelling aroma in your presence, O Father. Continue, Lord, to be with us, and Lord, continue, Lord, to minister to us, O Father God, even during the worship and the prayer and the word time, O Father. Speak to us, O Father, Lord. We surrender ourselves once again, and we humble ourselves, Lord, at your feet. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Bible reading taken from the book of Luke, chapter 18, verses 9 to 14. Luke, chapter 18 verses 9 to 14. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to him, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. Amen. Good evening. Uh, we are indeed blessed to have Sister Jaya Abraham. She lives in the city of lights, Dubai. She and her husband love people and uh, maintain an open home. So if you ever get lost in Dubai, do ask us for her address and we'll, you know, you know where to go. Uh, her dream is to love people uh, and to see the optimum potential released in each one of them. She desires that people she mentors grow tall on her shoulders she engages with people over long terms for transformational leadership development. We're indeed blessed to have Sister Jaya Abraham minister to us this evening. The topic for tonight is what? That's right. It's what? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I can see some familiar faces. Few of you have put on your videos. I can see some familiar faces. Yeah, thank you for joining in. And um, I know we are in the season of uh, Lent, as we say, waiting for the Easter and then the Pentecost and all of that. Today, I want to, be, in the next four days, I want to deal with um, the whole focus topic of what is my response to the prayers. I am not responded to. I don't want to call it in the common language. It's all of us will name it as unanswered prayer. No, God is not answering a question paper that he says, okay, take. This is a multiple choice. Yes for you. Yes for you. Yes for you. No, not as yet. No. I, I, what is my response to these unanswered, or rather not responded to petitions, supplications of each one of us? You know, when we, uh, when it, it is a process of pain. Um, and I just want to tell you that uh, when answers are not received as expected, when responses are not received in the time that is expected, there is brokenness. And we want to be honest with it. 
And I want to say, to tell you one good news this evening, that our faith matures the longer we wait for things. You know, we live in a generation of entitlement and immediate satisfaction. There is no delayed, uh, a delay in receiving anything. Instantaneously, you have everything. And I believe uh, being able to wrestle when I don't have those responses. And you know something? The atheist doesn't struggle with unanswered or irresponsive prayers. It's we who are followers of Christ who struggle. Why isn't God answering me? Why is it? Why is it? And I learned way many years ago, the question why does not have an answer. You know, for the serious topic, I just want to share one line. Uh, you know, when we came, when I came, when I came back late to class after a break in the school, the teacher said, why are you late to class? And I'm thinking in my mind, doesn't she realize I've come late? Either let me in or tell me to go out. I'll go continue playing in the field. I'm okay. The why never had a response. Yeah, but we continue asking. And I just want to tell you the journey of waiting for answers for prayer, which is not as yet a yes, as yet we don't know if it's a no. And you know what? When our expectation is, I don't want to build my expectation to a no. I want to hope to a yes. That's usually our struggle. Uh, and I want to share my own personal story before we get to the Bible passage in, uh, in a minute or so. One of the things is, uh, uh, you know, I have a condition called vitiligo. I wear full sleeve shirts most of the time on my face and everything you can see. And if I take off my spectacles, you will be able to see I have different patches of colors of skin and everything. I almost look like a human Dalmatian sometimes, okay? And when I got diagnosed with it, the first time I went to a doctor, and the doctor saw it and then he, uh, he said every day, Jaya, for the next 30 days, take pictures of yourself. Those days were mobile with no camera. So we have to use a camera, okay, uh, which the photographers used. And we, I had to take picture of myself. I refused to do that. I couldn't even look at myself what picture I will take. Painful. And the second doctor we went to, I went with my pastor's wife. I thought she was quite a, <laughs> a bold-hearted Malayali woman. She came with me and this man used a particular pair of glasses through which he showed her how white I have become, how my melanin has all disappeared. Seeing that she fainted. So who was the patient became a question. Yeah. So I, and you, you can ask me, Jai, you pray so much. What has been the answer? I just want to tell you after three doctors, I realized there is no solution per se for this. I just got to believe that my husband who wanted to have a fair wife after seven years, he got a fair wife. And in heaven, again, I'll become spirit to spirit like the way God wants me to be. Yeah, it has been painful. Where has it been more painful? I want to tell you, don't hold it against me. I'm sure all of you experience it. It's just that probably you don't embarrassingly share it so honestly. The church could not accept it. They asked me, are you in sin? Is there a problem? Are you holding back tithes? How can a loving God be punishing at the same time? So I read through the book of Job and I, I found out for the first time the church was facing a condition like what I was going through with a person. So they didn't even know how to handle it. And they want you to be super spiritual. Yes, everything is fine. All is very good. God is answering my prayers. I'm just fine. I have to speak the best of the spiritual language. But I was very, very, very honest. And that's the time when God spoke to me through Job as well as through Jesus. Jesus had painful times of not being responded by his father the way he wanted, which we'll deal with tomorrow. Okay. So going to today's passage, which our dear uh, Clara, Clara, I think her name is, she read from Luke chapter 18 verses 9 to 14. Here are two men, one righteous, self-righteous, and one was a poor sinner. One claiming his credentials before God. The other guy is saying, Lord, just have mercy. I'm a sinner. The Pharisee brings all his credibility before Jesus and says, hey, this is me. I fast. I pray. Answer me. The sinner says in humility, apart from your, apart from your atonement, I can't even be justified. Forgive me. 
a real sinner. I have no words else to say. The Pharisee, when he was praying five times, he said, I, 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 I. You can go read the passage again. Multiple versions you will know. Whereas the, uh, the tax collector says, have compassion on me, God. Be merciful to me, a sinner. And this evening, I want to say, we come to God as a, for a, to a God who will be merciful to us and will look at us as a sinner and who who's not only saved us from our sins, but who also justifies us. And every time when we come to pray, may we stand in that awe of knowing I stand righteous in his righteousness, hidden under the shadow of his wing, justified by his atonement and sanctified every day, even if I fall to sin. That itself is a huge settling maturity for us as people who pray and may Lent bring in that maturity for us to understand in him, there is going to be that kind of a mercy, that kind of a compassion, that kind of a forgiveness, that kind of a justification. I'm going now, right now to Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 to 5. I want to share with you how Jesus overturns the pyramid in the way he responds to us. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 to 5, it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. You know, it is in our brokenness that Jesus really responds. It is in our brokenness that really Jesus come to speak into us. You know, there have been many days as I've been in uh, the Middle East in the last six months along with my husband, it's been days of weeping before the Lord and praying. And as it is, I know all of us are praying for Ukraine, but the Lord really broke my heart and said, Jaya, it is not only Ukraine that is broken, it is Russia also that, that is broken. Would you have the guts to stand and pray in Russia where people are, you know, they don't want to be at war, but they have no other choice. And Jesus overturns the pyramid for us to be able to pray for the enemies. And this evening, I want, to I want to really exhort each one of you and say, would you stand in the gap and say, Lord, either you have guts like David in like in Psalm 2 and Psalm 3 and slap Putin on his face. Or you withdraw and say, Lord, give me the heart to pray for both. You know, our maturity is being able, we don't know what's the answer. Suddenly COVID has taken the backseat. We don't know what is God's response going to be. But in this journey of not getting response from God, I say, yes, how do I sustain? How does these words of God become alive in my life? In my brokenness, how do I know Jesus blesses me? I want to read a particular statement, a sentence, a quote by a man called Samuel Rutherford, who was a Scottish pastor in the 16th century, 17th century. Grace groweth best in winter. Grace groweth best in winter. Probably a guy who read the Bible in King James Version and wrote it in King James Version also, all his books. Grace groweth best in winter. How did this quote come out? This man was, um, Samuel Rutherford was a pastor in the 17th century. In 1636, just close to December, he lost his wife. His wife died and they did not allow him to preach anymore. And meanwhile, the governing people of the nation, the Scottish nation, actually arrested him for his belief. Here he was in the prison, looking through the window outside, not knowing in the cold, rugged night, two losses, loss of his ministry, loss of his wife. There, Samuel Rutherford reaches out to God in his pain, in his absolute darkness, in his absolute helplessness. I won't say hopelessness. And that's where God helped him to write, grace groweth best in winter. You know, I always thought, to I want to give you an analogy, to plant a tree or a plant in, win in, in winter, in, sorry, in spring is very good. But I went and found out to plant something in winter is the best season because 
In winter, there is no leaves. There is no fruit being born. Only the roots grow deep. They are able to draw on the reserves and get replenished. And the winter primes the new life in the tree, which you see it appearing in the seasons to follow. So winter, analogy, uh, uh, in this analogy, will let us know is a time when the tree is growing deep in its roots. And I want to bring it back to the story of Samuel Rutherford and to our lives of irresponse to our prayers, our petitions, our supplication. It's in our most painful times we grow deeper with God. It is in the most um, times of absolute helplessness that we grow really deep in God. Last week, we really had an helpless situation. For the last one and a half months, I have been battling to get one particular mobile operator in this part of the world to get our mobile operations on as well as to be able to operate the account and change my plans. Everywhere I went, doors closed. Then at last I sat and I said, Father, I don't need an answer but please give me wisdom and discernment. Suddenly, a bell rang in my husband and my ears. We went and found the channel partner who was not willing to answer all our calls right inside a particular building. And we said, can we have an answer, please? It was almost supernatural. In the terrible office, nobody will sit there and work. It looked like it was a closed down work. A girl came up and said, by tonight in six hours, I'll get it done for you. I said, are you sure you'll get it done? Yes, we will get it done. And lo and behold, today that particular service of my mobile is on because this girl made it possible for it to happen to us. But honestly, it was a prayer of a month and a half. Money paid, nothing held back, all the documents given, everything done. Sometimes everything is right, but still we don't get the response. I want to ask you this evening, how many of you are really struggling with answers to your prayers being held back? How many of you are really struggling saying, Lord, are you there? Are you really listening to me? Are you sure you know that I have asked you something? And then you're saying, Jaya, you give all these promises, Psalm 5. The psalmist writes, I lay my petitions early in the morning with expectation. He will hear me when I call out to him. Evening, morning, and noon will I pray and cry aloud. He will hear my voice. In the midst of darkness, I cry to thee from the ends of earth, wherever I may be. My strength in helplessness, so answer me. So we are believing the omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient God is going to be hearing. And then Psalm 46 says, verse 1, God is an ever-present help. That means he's never failing. He's never disappearing. Psalm 121 tells us, where does my help come from? Uh, my help comes from the Lord who is the maker of heaven and earth. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. All these become no assurances to us when we wait. But I just want to tell you, unless you understand what you're waiting for, you're waiting for him to mature you. You're waiting for him to deepen you. You're waiting for him to lift you in his arms to be more like him. We are his image bearers. We became shame bearers at sin. But he is transforming us from one glory to another glory. In this waiting, it's all not passive. It is not all unsuccessful. Successful. It is all not unfruitful. It is God actually taking over our lives. That's why Isaiah 40, 40, 31 becomes alive. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach us, Lord, this Lenten season to wait. We as people have to be grateful that God grows us through painful times of waiting. What we are waiting for becomes a question. But who we are waiting for, what he is doing in us, becomes the answers for us to understand where he is moving us towards. So tomorrow we will deal with how do we manage this weight? 
What is my heart condition as I wait? I want to close by reading the lyrics of a song before I pray. Oceans, a song in 2013, became the most listened song, Fry Hill song, across the globe. On the charts, it stood number one for months together. This is how, can you close your eyes as I read these lyrics and it might encourage you. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters. Wherever you would call me, take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters. Wherever you would call me, take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my savior. As you allow God to take you deeper and deeper, as deep calls out to deep in this waiting, would you join me as I read the prayer of a famous Ignatius of Loyola? Oh, Christ Jesus, when all of darkness and we feel our weaknesses and helplessness, give us the sense of your presence, your love and your strength. Help us to have perfect trust in your protecting love and strengthening power so that nothing may frighten or worry us for living close to you. We shall see your hand, your purpose, your will through all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Father God, we come into your mighty presence today, Lord. And we want to thank you, Father. We want to thank you for this lovely message, this powerful message by your servant, Father God by Mrs. Jaya Abraham. We pray that you will bless her, bless her work, bless her family, Lord. We want to thank you, Lord, for being a God who's always a God who listens, who understands, a God who teaches us humility. Father, in the spirit of Lent, we especially want to come into your mighty presence, Lord. And we want to thank you, Lord, for your grace, your grace that knows no bounds, the meaning of grace, Lord, that you have given us, that while we were still sinners, you died for us. You humbled yourself, Lord, to be obedient even to death on a cross. Father God, teach us to do what is right. Teach us to live like you. Teach us to learn from you. Teach us to be more and more and more like you in all that we do. Lord Jesus, teach us to be rooted in your love and replenished. Really, Father God, during this time, all of us listening here, Lord, may our roots grow grow deeper and deeper and deeper into the soil of your being, Lord, that we will learn to listen, Lord. And yes, Lord, not just our roots grow, but we will be branches spreading your love and light into the world, that whoever sees us sees you, Lord. And as they see you, Lord, they will turn to you, that every knee will bow and every tongue confess that you are God. Father God, we commit all of this into your mighty hands, knowing that you are a God who hears our prayers, who listens to us. We thank you for the lovely word that you've given us, the Bible, Lord. We thank you for these periods of time that we can draw closer to you, Lord. And we most want to thank you, Lord, for the gift of prayer, the gift of coming on our knees and telling you about what we're going through and that you listen to us, you hear us, you understand us. Yes, Lord Jesus, thank you for being our ever help ever-present help, Lord, our refuge, Lord Jesus. Teach us to rely on you in every step of the way. Lord Jesus, some of us are going through different difficulties at this time, and we commit each and every one of them into your mighty hands, Lord, for all the people who gathered today and who couldn't as well. We know, Lord Jesus, that you know their needs, you and you will fulfill their needs, Lord, in your mighty plan and purpose, for we know that you have plans for us to help us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything. Father, we pray for Reggie Uncle and Kavya and Cyril and Karun and Johanna and Esther Auntie and the lovely work that they drew into this prayer. We commit them and their families into your mighty hands. We also, Lord Jesus, want to pray that you will be with each and every one of us. And we pray especially, Lord, that we will continue to hear your word and live it in our lives, that our lives may be worthy of your mighty calling. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Clara, and uh, dear Priya, for leading in us in prayer and the Bible reading. And thank you so very much, dear Sister Jaya, for your urge and uh, need to serve, to expound divine 
mysteries and heavenly revelations. It's indeed, indeed a blessing, truly was a blessing. Uh, we're indeed thankful to you for making time to be with us for the next three days also, uh, to hear the how, why, and where after the what. Thank you very much. Have a good night. May God be with all of you. Um, let's meet tomorrow at nine o'clock again. The link is the same, just in case you're not part of the WhatsApp group, the link is on the chat, chat box. Anyone who'd uh, like to have specific prayers, do write into us. We are there to pray for you. Thank you very much. Have a good night.